Hi guys, good morning. So I was just on my Instagram and somebody asked me a really, really good question. And um, instead of typing up a novel of an answer, I decided that I should probably do a video about it and hopefully that will be easier to just go over everything and understand it. So the question was, what makes pottery functional? How do you make sure that your piece is functional? First of all, let's just touch on that. Um, functional is not always the same thing as food safe, okay? If you are making a wall hanging and you made something that's supposed to stay on the wall, it's staying on the wall, check, it's functional. Is it food safe? Not necessarily. So function and food safety, two different things. Now, I think that we're talking about things like mugs and bowls. So what makes those functional? What makes them food safe, which is a part of being functional? So, all right, so let's go over a couple of those things. Um, first of all, very obvious, your shape, okay? Now that has nothing to do with food safety, but everything to do with function. There was a really funny post on Instagram going around for a while. Somebody made a mug, and I think it was a cat, and it had two pointy ears, so when you drink out of a mug, they would like poke you in the eye. So um, food safe, yes, functional, no, <laughs> okay? So your shape, pay attention to your shape, of course. It has to do what it's supposed to do. Um, something that has to do with shape, but is a little bit different, is the texture. So I'm a really good person to talk about texture and make a lot of texture. Texture can catch food particles and can grow bacteria sometimes. If it's not glazed properly, if there are a lot of crevices, it could be, first of all, hard to wash sometimes, so you have to pay attention to that too. But um, health-wise, it's important to note that it can grow bacteria, okay? Sometimes um, there's this test that you can do where you take a piece of pottery and you, I think you soak it and you put it in the microwave for like two minutes and some of them will actually leak like black sludge out of them and that is bacterial growth. It's a real thing, it exists. So be careful, um, pay attention to it. However, let me remind you that we do have immune systems. So in other countries, they make pieces out of um, clay that grows bacteria all the time. People eat out of them. You know, they all seem to do A-OK, -okay. but um, in this country, technically, it's regulated. Um, not really, but, <laughs> but it's supposed to be, and it's just something to be mindful of, okay? So watch your texture. Try to make sure it doesn't trap food particles. I'm going to talk about crackle glazes, which is a part of texture, but I'm going to talk about it when I talk about glazes. Clay. Clay is obviously a really, really uh, big question, big uh, thing to consider. So. I am going to make it really, really simple. Um, it's a lot more convoluted than that, but let's just say, so you have three basic types of clay, okay? You have earthenware, you have stoneware, and you have porcelain. They each have different levels of absorption at the end. So earthenware is the most porous clay. Porcelain is the most tight clay. It's almost glass-like in nature, in, in, in texture, um, under the microscope. I'm going to say something that I'm probably going to get yelled at for. Okay, here it goes. Um, earthenware is not technically food safe, <laughs> okay? You're probably going to be just fine if you have an earthenware mug, okay? It's, like I said, it's, they've been used for millennia and people have been fine and you will probably be fine. Also, really experienced potters who know what they're doing, they will use a really tight fitting glaze that will in theory seal all of those pores and should really take care of the pores issue. However, as somebody with a science background, I will tell you that I have looked at a glaze under my microscope and no glaze is perfect. So you have a potential for trapping bacteria and growing bacteria. Unlikely, probably fine, but in my studio I only use stoneware and porcelain because I have trust issues and I don't trust my glaze to do the job. So I want the, the actual clay body to be tight enough that it would not grow um, a whole lot of bacteria. Okay, so I aim for clay bodies that are less than 2% of absorption in the end. Okay, that is just my thing. I'm not telling anybody how to practice, but if you ask for my opinion, I go for clay bodies that the manufacturer will say at cone, whatever, 10, 1% absorption, you know, I really aim for it to be under 2%. So that really narrows me down to most stoneware and porcelain clays, not all of them, because like paper porcelain, for example, has a very high absorption. I would never use it for a mug in my practice. Okay, this is how I make my pottery. Um, okay, so, so I look for those clay bodies that are less than 
Okie dokie. Now, it will say sometimes, stoneware, cone 6 through 10. Guys, there's no such thing as a, as a clay that is cone 6 through 10. The question is, what is the absorption at cone 6 when it only begins to vitrify versus cone 10 when it's done vitrifying? Sometimes it's acceptable and sometimes it's not. So if your absorption at cone 6 is 2% and at cone 10 is 1%, yeah, you know what? You can use that clay body and you can probably fire it to either one and be fine. However, you will see a lot of clay bodies where the absorption at cone 10 is 1%, but at cone 6 is like 5%. So that is not a clay body that you want to under fire. You want to make sure that you fire it to the top cone to get that really tight, tight vitrification. Okay, so uh, if you fire your clay to the top of its cone where it's supposed to go and the absorption is supposed to be nice and tight, that's a good thing. Now let's talk about glaze, right? So what do you put on that, on that clay? Um, I expect my glaze to take care of the last 2%. Of the absorption. I buy my glazes. These are all bought. I do not mix my own glazes because glazes have to be labeled as food safe. When you mix your own glazes, if you know what you're doing, um, you can make a food safe glaze. There are many recipes available that we know are food safe because they have been tested in a the lab. There are many potters that will mix their own glaze and will send it off to the lab to be tested. And those are perfectly 100% legit and um, you know can be used for food safe pottery. I don't trust my own skills and I don't want to mess with the labs. So I buy my glazes that have a stamp on them that says food safe, meaning it has no lead, it has no radioactive elements. Yes, there's such a thing. Um, Fiesta dinnerware in, I want to say like, I don't know, a couple of decades ago, they used to make it with uranium in it. Okay, we're still all alive. So again, take it with a grain of salt, but we, there are certain things we don't want in our glazes. So when you buy a glaze, make sure it says food safe. Make sure that your glaze matches the cone of your clay. If you have a high fire glaze and a low fire clay or vice versa, one of them is gonna get melted into the puddle or one of them is gonna be under fired and not, um, not, not get vitrified. So if you're getting a cone six clay and you're planning to fire it to cone six, make sure that you get a cone six glaze, okay? They have to match, they have to be the same. As far as your glaze goes itself, uh, besides the food safety, uh, be really careful. As far as like uh, crackle glazes, for example, true crackle glazes are not technically food safe. Actually, I'm gonna go out and go ahead and yell at me. I'm gonna say they're not food safe. Guys, don't use crackle glazes on the inside of your uh, pieces that you're going to eat and drink out of. Guys, I have seen some really, really bad injuries, okay? Those little squares of uh, glaze, they're glass and I have seen them pop off and I have seen people ingest them. I was a nurse, um, I don't know if you guys know that, but I was an ICU nurse um, in my last career. And um, I pay attention to these things and I have seen injuries, I have seen cuts, I have seen glass swallowed, be really, really careful. Um, besides that, it can also trap bacteria in all of those crevices. And I have a really good pot to show you, not right, I don't have it on, on me right now, but in my kitchen, there is a Lennox bowl that cracked and in that hairline crack that you couldn't see for years, there is now black spreading onto the inside of the clay, which means that it grew bacteria, okay? Do I still use that bowl? Yes, I do, because I have an immune system. But um, cracks can grow bacteria and they probably will. Just so you know, you need to know that. Um, so crackle glazes will grow bacteria, crackle glazes, um, more importantly, can pop off pieces of glass. Be careful. So that also has to do with um, clay glaze fit. Okay, sometimes you have to change your clay or change your glaze so that when you fire them together at that cone six, they fit like a glove and there are no cracks. You know, um, it, it, that's, that's pretty important actually. So, okay, so now you have your clay that has a nice tight, you know, less than 2% absorption. You have your glaze that fires to the same cone. It's food safe. It's not gonna, um, you know, crackle on you. Fantastic. Do you have a food safe piece? Sure. Yep, you're good. Except some of us use gold lusters and some of us use china paints and we use, you know, overglazes and things like that. 
So with those things, you have to be also careful. So on the outside of the glass of the mug, it's not such a big deal. Usually, you know, you can get away with using just about anything as long as it doesn't have like uranium. Um, but as far as the gold lusters, sometimes we'll put them on the inside. If it has contact with food, you have to make sure that it's also food safe. So you go back to the manufacturer, like Duncan, I know, makes food safe gold lusters. That's what I use. And um, it, it has an MSTS sheet, you know, um, material safety data sheet that the company will provide that says whether or not their product is food safe. If they don't post it online, you call the manufacturer, you say, hey, I'm looking to buy your gold luster. Is it food safe? You have to know this. You can't use it on surfaces that will be in contact with food without knowing if it's food safe or not. Okay, so just pay attention to that. Not all of us use things like that, but um, I know I do. Always make sure that what you're putting in contact with food is food safe for a manufacturer. And that includes your, well, I've never heard of a clay that wasn't, but in theory, um, but your glaze and your overglazes, you know, gold lustres, you make sure that that says food safe on it. Um, I think I covered most of it. What do you guys think? Um, okay, so you, you're worried about your shape, um, your surface, right? Glay, your firing, your glaze, and your um, gold lusters. So all of those things have to be um, up to the function, and that includes food safety for pieces that are supposed to be food safe. Okay? Did I answer your question? <laughs> I hope so. If you have any questions, please type them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'm gonna run now. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.